Oh, I absolutely love it. So I guess, I guess everyone's still like, re I guess everyone's still reeling from the idea that we have to kind of, you know, basically limit anyone that we can meet outside of our home to six. And that's still a bit of a point of contrition or annoyance for most people, especially in the UK. Um, then this whole argument kind of developed, I guess, over the weekend where um, this confusing rule about mingling uh, and about whether or not you would you should dub in your neighbours kind of run, kind of raged on the timeline. And unfortunately, um, the lady that everyone seems to hate in the UK, Pretty Patel, had to kind of front it and kind of explain it away in her really janky way of explaining it. So here's a... Here's a little clip here from the BBC. It says, coronavirus families mingling would be breaking rule of six as Home Secretary. So let's hear what she has to say. Well, m mingling is people coming together. Um, that is my definition of mingling. It's people coming together. Okay, so just, um, just, just to be clear, if, if a family of four is out on their way to a park and they see another family of four <laughs> that they know and they stop to have a chat with them, is that mingling? Well, it, 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 it is mingling. I think it is absolutely mingling. But Mate, are you, are, are, you, are you like... Just imagine everything that's going on right now, right? And just imagine the stress and the strain that people are under especially small families, especially families with young children, people that live in small apartments, small homes. You have the rare occasion that you're able to go out and you feel safe. And you happen to bump into a couple of neighbours who you actually don't mind, right? Because usually most neighbours you fucking detest. But you actually bump into a couple of neighbours who you haven't seen in ages, right? And you're actually like, oh my God, it's good to see your face, right? Adult to adult, you're not talking to your, your kids anymore. You're having a little bit of adult chat. You stop and chat. You have a bit of a banter. The wives go off and have their little chat. The fellas go off and have theirs. The kids, you know, try not to kill each other. And then in that midst, you're meant to somehow remember that, oh, I'm not meant to do this. And you're meant to, what, fob the bin? Call the police? What? What are you gonna do? Call one one one. Call the community peace to come down and what? And arrest Gary from around the corner. Like, just imagine the insanity. And this is the thing that makes this really interesting. Like, it seems like again, I guess the word mingling was the point that everyone kind of pulled out from this. Like, well, what defines mingling? Is it passing by something in the park and having a stop and chat? Does it mean, you know, if your neighbours come and drop off some milk and sugar for you and decide to have a chat about what they saw on TV, is that mingling? Or do they mean in a conventional sense or people just hanging out in groups around the streets and shit? But the interesting part of it is that this is the first time, like, again, you wonder where the pushback is. You wonder where the other outside voices are in Parliament. This is the only time they've heard any kind of pushback on the term mingling and how Oxford clarify clarify and once they start to you know do the dance of trying to clarify things they completely fall apart they don't have a scooby of how to articulate themselves and explain things in a way that kind of fills people with confidence or you know that kind of thing where you go have you ever started working somewhere and you have that first sort of team meeting in a new place you're in and you could quickly tell from me anyway from my experience I could quickly tell um if the company was like legit or not based on the first meeting and based on what you hear from the co-founder founder cto whatever it is right you can tell you can okay cool he or she knows what the fuck they're doing right that person's sharp this is this is a great place or you can go on the other side and think okay this person's a complete muppet right you, it, it happens all the time and they seem to have like a really especially the Tories as well they seem to have a very <laughs> sorry a very um good way of reminding us all just how bad they are at communicating which is interesting just 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 from an observational point of view right considering that most of these people are very well educated they come from very affluent families they are for the most part career politicians um this is essentially their dream job they haven't kind of ended up here because they failed at wall street or they failed at you know they failed in the stock market they failed being a you know an investment banker they've kind of seeked out a career in politics and they have absolutely no idea how to inspire confidence at all it's all just confusion and that kind of weird posh start thing where you try and uh, funny that says starts a start but we try and sound like you're getting to the heart of the issue but you're not interesting isn't it very very bizarre
providing. I think we have to put this into the so context. You, should walk, you shouldn't stop for a chat I, with, I, a, with another family. You know, <laughs> in the street. You've got to put this in the context of coronavirus and you know, so keeping distance, wearing masks. If you can have a chat at a. So what? So you meant to you meant to put your hand up when you see your neighbour that you actually don't mind to have a chat with and sort of like breeze past them or pretend like you didn't see them. You know, like when you're. It's, yeah, I've done this plenty of times. I'm sure everyone else has it. It's even better now with the masks, right? Because you've got an excuse not to stop, stop and chat with people. But come on, man. Give people a break. Distance. But I think you're saying even that is not possible. Well, I, I've already said the rule of six is about making sure that, you know, people are being mm, conscientious. Non-answer. But yeah, it's funny. Um, and then and then I guess she had to double down somewhat <laughs> via disappearance from the sun. If there was a big party taking place, it would be gathering God, I see, I see. if there was a big party taking place it would be right to call the police it is very clear that you know governments have said have you I've, i don't think she's got a funny face i don't think i've ever called the police for anything in my life i don't think there's ever been an occasion where i would unless i legitimately saw a murder occurring on my street which is you know probably unlikely to happen or like a car accident and even that you know you you know in the back of your head don't get me wrong it's a bad thing to think but in the back of your head you think oh, probably someone else called him right but if i honestly if i saw something visceral like a murder or a woman getting assaulted or something along those kind of lines right you're on the blower straight away that's like a kind of instant reaction but a party someone making some noise like if anything the the most i would do is go go around the corner go next door and knock right but I'm a big believer, even that, you know, it, it depends on who your neighbours are. It depends on where you live and shit. Like you have to kind of, you know, you have to be a bit more street smart. You can't just go going around. And again, maybe for these people, you know, they live in Labrador Grove, you know, Wandsworth and Chelsea and Fulham and shit, right? They're, all, they're surrounded by all these sort of, you know, lofty, tofty, um, you know, uh, wine drinking at 2 p.m. sort of type people, right? So maybe that makes more sense. But if you live in ends, if you live anywhere where there's, uh an immigrant population you have to be very careful sometimes even in some of the more you know caucasian neighborhoods let's say places like bermondsey would you really want to go and knock on your neighbor's door in bermondsey and let them know that you they're caught probably causing too much noise or there's too many people in their home right now and you look like me will you really do that i don't think that would be a good idea i really don't said people gatherings you know gatherings of 30 or more people anyone that has effectively defined the rules they will be helping to spread coronavirus that is not a good thing and obviously we all have a role to play but it's such a stupid rule because who who's at this point the amount of people that are actually putting on these raves then it's not many right they try and make it seem like it's a big thing but it's not a big it's not as a big thing as they're trying to make it seem they're usually taking place in places where people aren't going to be snitched upon right you're going to try and do it as far away from people as possible whether it's in a forest an abandoned warehouse some random airbnb somewhere but they're not going to be in a, in a residential estate somewhere right regularly there's obviously some some parties have happened here there's some street ones i get it but for the most part most of these parties are happening under the nose of everybody they're happening you know sort of, sort of like hiding in plain sight but they're not going to suddenly turn you know your neighbor's home is not going to suddenly turn into flipping x or y overnight and if it is more likely than not there's not going to be the need to call the police because they're probably going to hear it from down the road isn't it play we're all taking personal responsibility yeah. we all have to be conscientious to one another you, sh you could call call the police if you choose to do that um what would you do uh, well if, if i was if i'm <sighs> really at home but you know if i saw something that i thought was inappropriate where are you pretty where are you really at home where are you where are you then quite frankly, I would effectively call the police or if it was in a social setting as well. Well, the government advice is pretty clear. You know, people should not be... Imagine dobbing in your neighbours, man. Just imagine during these times, imagine dobbing in your neighbours, snitching on them. Like, God damn it. So bad, isn't it? The gathering. Well, the fundamental principles have not changed from day one of coronavirus. So police officers on the front line, if they see you out and about, they will, and if you're with other friends, colleagues, etc., in a small group of around six people, no more, they will... If oh, again, not my place to talk about a woman's body, but she doesn't look how she... she doesn't, her face doesn't look how her body looks, does it? Her face doesn't match her body. That's what I meant to say, doesn't it? Is that always just me? Again, not to, you know... And maybe those chairs too, they're not the most flattering chairs for women because those kind of weird chairs where they've got like a really long base and then a short back... 
their sort of design went away where if you're a woman you have to kind of sit really far back in them to hide you know to kind of make sure you're looking decent or you got to sit around the edge kind of trump style right with your kind of you know with your ass all cocked up there's no other way to sit on those kind of chairs so maybe the chair is not doing any justice but that outfit and you know that chair it's not really a good look effectively come up to you and they'll have a conversation they'll engage you explain the coronavirus rules you know keep lol I'll engage you lol distance social distance etc etc but of course if you're not complying they will effectively enforce a fixed penalty notice um, that is a fine that is if you're being non-compliant and i will emphasize that is down to non-compliance and non-compliance is important okay. and the reason why we have fines is because we want to stop the spread of this disease and again, this is all the fault of the government because if the rules were enforced in a more strict way in the beginning, this would have been all avoided. Or you could have, you know what it could have done too, what rules usually do. You enforce them strict as you can in the beginning and then you loosen them. As it, I'd imagine like good parenting. You enforce the rules as strict as you can when you're able to get away with it and you know when, you're, when your kid is able to listen to you. And then as they grow... And as they show you that they're responsible through their deeds and their actions, you sort of loosen some of the restrictions you place upon them so that they feel some level of ownership and, you know, and autonomy. And they feel kind of empowered to kind of make the right choices. And you hope as they go on in life, they turn into a fairly decent human being. But to somehow... So it, it, this feels like you know the the kind of you know you know that parent school that let you all go around and hang out and play computer until 2 a.m in the morning and then suddenly their kid turns 18 and they suddenly start turning into a, a tyrant it's too late you've already built up some bad habits with your kid already right this is this is the, the horse is now already bolted you cannot you tame this beast and it's the same thing happened with corona they open pubs, they open bars, they make people believe that things were okay. They encourage people to go on the holiday. They told us to go eat outdoors and get discounts at our favorite restaurants and shit. And now suddenly we have to dob in our neighbors. No, I'm not going to dob in my neighbors. You should maybe have thought of it. You should have maybe uh, thought of that before you open up all the weather spoons, isn't it? God damn it, man. God damn it. But hey, what do I know?